Chapter 38. Sympathy in the mains demiş. Mains kelimesini hiçbir şekilde anlamıyorum. Hani böyle bir mekan adı olduğunu biliyorum ama hiçbir şey hissettirmiyor. Nasıl bir isim oluşması var buradaki bu es takısı bir şeyin çoğulu yapıyor mu yapmıyor mu falan hiç bilmiyor. Okay. Mains was the oldest. Hani birden M'den çizmeye başlayınca üç satır çizmeye başladı bir değişime gitti. Okay. Mains was the oldest building at the university. Over the centuries it had grown slowly in all directions, engulfing smaller buildings and courtyards as it spread. It had a look of an ambitious architectural breed of lichen that was trying to cover as many acres as it could. It was a hard place to find your way around. Hallways took odd turns that ended unexpectedly or took long rambling roundabout paths. It could easily take 20 minutes to walk from one room to another, despite the fact that they were only 50 feet apart. More experienced students knew shortcuts, of course, which work rooms and lecture halls to cut through to reach your destination. Bu bize nerede tanıdık geliyor, neyi hatırlatıyor bize? Hogwarts hatırlatıyor diyoruz. Okay. At least one of the courtyards had been completely isolated and could only be accessed by climbing through a window. Rumor had it that there were some rooms bricked off entirely, some with students still inside. Their ghosts were rumored to walk the halls at night, bewailing their fate and complaining about the food in the mess. My first class was held in Mainz. Luckily, I had been warned by my bunkmates that Mainz was difficult to navigate. So despite getting lost, I still arrived with time to spare. When I finally found a room for my first class, I was surprised to find it resembled a small theater. Seats rose in tired semi-circles around a small raised stage. In larger cities, my troupe had performed in places not unlike this one. That thought relaxed me as I found a seat in the back. I was a jangling mess of excitement as I watched our students slowly trickle into the room. Everyone was older than me by at least a few years. I revealed the first 30 sympathetic bindings in my head as the theater filled with anxious students. There were perhaps 50 of us in all, kalabalık baya, making the room about three quarters full. Some had pen and paper with hard bags to write on. Some had wax tablets. I hadn't brought anything, but that didn't worry me over much. I've always had an excellent memory. Keşke ben de böyle olsam diyorum. Şuraya bir bakıp geliyorum. Master Hem entered the room and made his way onto the stage to stand behind a large stonework table. He looked impressive in his dark master's robes, and it was bare seconds before the whispering, shuffling theater of students hushed to silence. So you want to be arcanist, as he said. You want magic like you heard about in bedtime stories. Bir kere daha gördük bu lafı. Yani böyle bu, bu, bu lafı aynen. Menet söyledi bedtime stories. Hemen söyledi bedtime stories. Alda etmek için söyledi ikisi de falan. Bu Chandri muhabbetini araştırmanın kuvvet için yarattığı zorlukları anlamaya başlıyoruz. Bu tekrarlar faydalı oluyor. Bu açıdan diyorum. You listen to songs about Tabol in the Great. Roaring sheets of fire. Magic rings, invisible clocks. Sirs that never got dull, portions to make you fly. He shook his head, disgusted. Well, if that's what you're looking for, you can leave now, because you won't find it here. It doesn't exist. Nedense çok Snape hanım satıyor diyorum. At this point, a student came in, realized he was late, and moved quickly into a vacant seat. Hemen spotted him. Hemen spotted him, though. Hello, glad you chose to attend. What is your name? Gel, the boy said nervously. I'm sorry, I had a bit of a hard time. 
Gel hemen interrupted. Why are you here? Get gate for a moment before managing to say. For principles of sympathy, I don't appreciate tardiness in my class. For tomorrow, you may prepare a report on the development of the sympathy clock. Its differences from the previous, more arbitrary clocks that used harmonic motion and its effect on the accurate treatment of time. The boy twisted in his seat. Yes, sir. And he seemed satisfied with the reaction. Very well. But the sympathy then. Another boy hurried in, clutching a hard back. He was young, by which I mean he looked to be no more than twenty. Two years older than me. Hemme stopped him before he could make it into a seat. Hello there, he said in an overcourteous tone. And you are? Basil, sir, the boy stood awkwardly in the aisle. I recognized him. I had spied on his admissions interview. Basil, you wouldn't happen to be from ill, would you? Hemme asked, smiling sharply. No, sir. Ah, Hemme said, feigning disappointment. I had heard that Irish tribes used the sun to tell time, and as such, had no true concept of punctuality. However, as you're not Irish, I can see no excuse for being late. Can you tam bir Snape diyor? Ben hiç bu kadar Snape'e benzediğini şey etmediydim ama baya benziyor. Acaba dedim bu Patrick Rothfuss az buçuk çalmış olabilir mi Snape'den falan oldum. Abla ne diyorsun sen günah falan. Okay diyorum. Yani sadece bir fikir. Basil's mouth worked silently for a moment, as if to make some excuse. Then apparently decided better of it. No, sir. Good. For tomorrow, you can prepare a report on his lunar calendar compared to the more accurate, civilized, Eterian calendar that you should be familiar with by now. Be seated. Basil slung wordlessly into a nearby seat like a whipped dog. Hemme gave up all pretext of lecture and lay in wait for the next tardy student. Thus it was that the hall was tensely silent when she stepped hesitantly into the room. It was a young woman of about 18, a rarity of sorts. The ratio of men to women in the university is about 10 to 1. Hemme's manner softened when she entered the room. He moved quickly up the steps to greet her. Ah, oh, my dear, I'm suddenly pleased that we have not yet begun today's discussion. He took her by the elbow and led her down a few of the steps to the first available seat. She was obviously embarrassed by the tension. I'm sorry, Master Emma. Means it's bigger than I'd guessed. No worry, Emma said in a kindly fashion. You're here and that's what matters. He solicitously had her arrange her paper and ink before returning to the stage. Once there, it seemed as if he might actually lecture. But before he began, he looked back to the girl. I'm sorry, miss, she was the only woman in the room. Poor manners on my part. What's your name? Ria. Ria, is that short for Ryan? Yes, it is, she smiled. Ryan, would you please cross your legs? What the fuck did he... What the fuck? I'm so rahatsized. I'm so The request was made with such an earnest tone that not even a titter escaped the class. Titter der. I'm so irritated. I'm getting 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 so irritated. I'm the request was made with such an earnest tone that not even a titter escaped the class. Looking puzzled, Ryan crossed her legs. Now that the gates of hell are closed. Tamam. <laughs> okay. Hemme said in his normal, rougher tones, we can begin. And so he did, ignoring her for the rest of the lecture, which, as I see it, was an inadvertent kindness. Hani en azından şey olmadı. Hani sırf kadın diye böyle iki yüzlülük etmedi. Ona da kötü bir şey yaptı yani falan. Böyle bir şey var. Ön yargıda eşitlilik gibisinden en azından bir şey var diye 
Evet, aklıma geldi. Okay. It was a long two and a half hours. I listened attentively, always hoping that he would come to something I hadn't learned from a bente, but there was nothing. I quickly realized that while Hema was discussing the principles of sympathy, he was doing it at a very, very basic level. This class was a colossal waste of my time. Ulan şunu, şunu bir ders için tam hani bir iki tane oldu şu ana kadar aldığım dersler içinde ama çok aşırı hoş orijinal özgüvenli bir laf değil mi? Bir ders için colossal waste of my time diyebilme olayı falan öyle. Evet <gülüyor> evet okey bakıp geliyorum. Okey diyoruz. After him dismissed the class, I ran down the stairs and caught him just as he was leaving through a lower door. Master Heme, he turned to face me. Oh yes, our boy prodigy. I wasn't aware you were in my class. I didn't go too fast for you, did I? I need better than to answer that honestly. You covered the basics very clearly, sir. The principles you mentioned today will lay a good foundation for the other students in the class. Diplomacy is a large part of being a trooper. He puffed up a bit at my perceived compliment. Then looked more closely at me. Other students, he asked. I'm afraid I'm already familiar with the basics, sir. I know the three laws and the 14 corollaries, as well as the first 90. Yes, yes, I see, he cut me off. I'm rather busy right at the moment. We can speak of this tomorrow before class. He turned and walked briskly away. Half a loaf being better than not. I shrugged and headed for dark eyes. Hani böyle bir şekilde gidip ısrar etmeye devam edeceğini düşünüyordum. Umarım öyle yapmasın, umarım öyle yapmazsın diye de düşünüyordum bir yandan kafamın diğer bir tarafında ama öyle yapacağını da biliyordum falan. Öyle yapmadı. O kadar da hödük değilmiş bu kıvat. Benim bayağı bir aklımda hödük, kıvat bir hödüktür falan gibi kalmış. Hep hödük hareketleri yapmasını bekliyorum ama yapmadı. Emros'a karşılık vermesini bekliyordum, vermedi. Entay hödüklük bir. Hemen'in üstüne gitmedi entay hödüklük iki. Kvot o kadar da aranan bir karakter değil. Okay diyoruz. Half a loaf being better than none. I shrugged and headed for the archives. If I wasn't going to learn anything from him as lectures, I might as well start educating myself. Güzel diyoruz. This time when I entered the archives, there was a young woman sitting behind the desk. She was strikingly beautiful with a long dark hair and clear bright eyes. A notable improvement over Ambrose to be sure. She smiled as I approached the desk. What's your name? Claude, I said, son of Erleiden. She nodded and began to page through the ledger. What's yours? I asked to feel the silence. Fella, she said without looking up. Then nodded to herself and tapped the ledger. There you are, go on in. There were two sets of double doors leading out of the antechamber, one marked stacks and the other tops. Not knowing the difference between the two, I headed to the ones labeled stacks. That was what I wanted, stacks of books. Great heaps of books, shelf after endless shelf of books. I had my hands on the handles of the doors before Fela's voice stopped me. I'm sorry, it's your first time in here, isn't it? I nodded, not letting go of the door sanders. I was so close. What was going to happen now? The sex are arcanum only, she said apologetically. She stood up and walked around the desk to the other set of doors. Here, let me show you. I reluctantly let go of the door's handles and followed her. Using both hands, she tucked one of the heavy wooden doors open, revealing a large, high-ceilinged room filled with long tables. A dozen students were scattered throughout the room, reading. The room was well lit with the unwavering light of dozens of sympathy lamps. Fera leaned close to me and spoke in a soft voice. This is the main reading area. You'll find all the necessary tones used for most of the basic classes. 
she blocked the door open with her foot and pointed along one wall to a long section of shelving with three or 400 books. More books than I had ever seen in one place before. Fellow continued to speak softly. It's a quiet place. Not talking about a wish bird. I noticed that the room was almost unnaturally quiet. If you want a book that isn't there, you can submit a request at the desk. She pointed. They find the book and bring it out to you. I turned to ask her a question and only then realized how close she was standing. It says a great deal about how enamored I was with the archives that I failed to notice one of the most attractive women in the university standing less than six inches away. Like it says a great deal about how enamored I was with the archives that I failed to notice one of the most attractive woman in the university standing less than six inches away. How long does it usually take them to find a book? I asked quietly, trying not to stare at her. It varies, she brushed her long black hair back over her shoulder. Sometimes we're busier than others. Some people are better at finding the appropriate books. She shrugged and some of her hair swung back down to brush against my arm. Charlie Dieu and some of her hair swung back down to brush against my arm. Şuraya yakın oldukları için ve şöyle ettiği için saçından birkaç tanesi ön tarafa geliyordu. Kota değmeye falan başlıyor. Bu da etkileniyor diyoruz. Okay. Usually no more than an hour. I know that. Disappointed by not being able to browse the whole of the archives. But still excited to be inside. Once again, half a loaf was better than none. Thanks, fella. I went inside, and she let the door swing shut behind me. But she came after me just a moment later. One last thing, she said quietly. I mean, it goes without saying, but this is your first time here. Her expression was serious. The books don't leave this room. Nothing leaves the archives. Of course, I said, naturally, I had a nod. Pamela smiled and nodded. I just wanted to make sure. A couple of years ago, we had a young gent who was used to carrying off books from his father's library. I'd never even seen Lauren frown before that or talk much above a wish pair. But when he caught that boy in the street with one of his books, she shook her head as if she couldn't hope to explain what she had seen. I tried to picture the tall, somber master angry and failed. Thanks for the warning. Don't mention it, but I headed back out into the entrance hall. I approached the desk she had pointed out to me. How do I request a book? I asked a script quietly. He showed me a large log book, half filled with students' names and their requests. Some were requests for books with specific titles or others. While others were more general requests for information, one of the entries caught my eyes. My eye, Basir, Irish Lunar Calendar, <laughs> History of Ettrin Calendar. I looked around the room and saw the boy from Hamas class hunched over a book taking notes. I wrote, quote, The history of the Chandrian, reports of the Chandrian and their signs, black eyes, blue flame, etc. Oh, bir take it easy ya. Bir take it easy. Anne baban bunları şarkısını yapıyor diye başlara neler geldi. Are you fucking kidding me falan dedim şu an. I went to the shelves next and started looking over the books. I recognized one or two from my studies with Ben. The only sound in the room was the occasional scratch of a pen on paper or the faint bird wing sound of a page turning. Rather than being unsettling, I found it quite strangely comforting. Later, I was to find out that the place was nicknamed Tom's because of its crypt-like quiet. Eventually, a book called The Mating Habits of the Common Dracus caught my eye, and I took it over to one of the reading tables. Chronicler yazdı bu kitabı ve bu kitaptan bahsettiler. Okay, dear. 
I picked it because it had a rather stylish embossed dragon, dragon on the cover. But when I started reading, I discovered it was an educated investigation into several common myths. I was halfway through the title piece explaining how the myth of the dra dragon in all likelihood evolved from the much more mundane Dracus when a script appeared at my elbow. Claude, I know that, and he handed me a small book with a blue cloth cover. Opening it, I was instantly disappointed. It was a collection of fairy stories. I flipped through it, hoping to find something useful, but it was filled with sticky sweet adventure stories meant to amuse children. In all the sort, brave orphans tricked the Chandrian, win riches, marry princesses, and live happily ever after. I sighed and closed the book. I had half expected this. Until the Chandrian killed my family, I thought they were nothing more than children's stories too. This sort of search wasn't going to get me anywhere. After walking to the desk, I thought for a long moment before writing a new line in a request ledger. After walking to the desk, I thought for a long moment before writing a new line in the request ledger. Quote, the history of the order Amir, the origins of the Amir, the practices of the Amir, I reached the end of the line and rather than start another one, I stopped and looked up at the screen behind the desk. I take anything on the Amir, really, I said. You're a little busy right now, he said, gesturing to the room. Another dozen or so students had filtered in since I had arrived, but we'll bring something out to you as soon as we can. I returned to the table and flipped through the children's book again before abandoning it for the bestiary. The wait was much longer this time, and I was learning about the strange summer hibernation of Saskinian when I felt a light touch on my shoulder. The wait was much longer this time, and I was learning about the strange summer hibernation of Saskinian when I felt a light touch on my shoulder. I turned, expecting to see a screen with an armload of books, or maybe Basil come to say hello. I was startled by the sight of Master Lauren looming over me in his dark master's robes. Come, he said softly and gestured for me to follow. Not knowing what might be the matter, I followed him out of the reading room. We walked behind the screen's desk and down a flight of stairs to a small, featureless room with a table and two chairs. The archives was filled with little rooms like this, reading halls designed to give members of the Arcanum a place to sit privately and study. Bizim kütüphanede de var bunlardan. Hatta bir kere gitmek istedim, video çekmek için izin vermediler yüksek lisans olmadığım için. Fucking hell. Fucking hell diyoruz. Lauren laid the request ledger from Tom's on the table. I noticed your request while assisting one of the newer screws in his duties. He said, you have an interest in the Chandrin and the Amir, he asked. I know that. Is this in regard to an assignment from one of your instructors? For a moment, I thought about telling him the truth about what had happened to my parents, about the story I had heard in Tarbia. But Mena's reaction to my mention of the Chandrin had shown me how foolish that would be. Until I'd seen the Chandrin myself, I didn't believe in them. If anyone would have claimed to have seen them, I would have thought they were crazy. At best, Lauren would think I was delusional, at worst, a foolish child. I was suddenly pointed aware of the fact that I was standing in one of the cornerstones of cornerstones of civilization, talking to the master archivist of the university. It put things in a new perspective for me. The stories of an old man in some dark side tavern suddenly seemed very far away and insignificant. I shook my head. 
Nossa, it's merely to satisfy my curiosity. I have a great respect for curiosity. Dora said with no particular inflection. Perhaps I can satisfy yours a bit. Damir were a part of the church back when the Turin Empire was still strong. The credo was Ivara Enim Euj, which roughly translates as for the greater good. They were equal part knight, Aaron and vigilante. They had judiciary powers and could act as judges in both the religious and secular courts. All of them, to varying degrees, were exempt from the law. Exempt derken, bunlara law dokunmuyormuş falan. Very fucking good diyoruz. Aklıma nedense milletvekillerinin dokunulmazlığı geldi. O tarz bir şey diyoruz. I knew most of this already. But where did they come from, I asked. It was as close as I dared come to mentioning Scarpi's story. They evolved from traveling judges, Loren said. Men who went from town to town, bringing the rule of law to small Aturun towns. They originated in Atur, then he looked at me. Where else would they have originated? I couldn't bring myself to tell him the truth. That because of an old man's story, I suspected Demir might have roots much older than the Aturin Empire. That I hoped they might still exist somewhere in the world today. Yorun took my silence as a response. A piece of advice, he said gently. Demir are dramatic figures. When we are young, we all pretend to be Amir and fight battles with willow switch swords. It is natural for boys to be attracted to those stories. He met my eyes. Whoever, a man, an arcanist, must focus himself on the present day. He must attend to practical things. And şu an yaptığı bu konuşma, kvotu utandırmak için yapılmış bir konuşma değil ama kvotu baya utandıran bir konuşma diyoruz. Okay, beğendim. Doğru yazılma olduğu için bu yazının böyle bir, hani bu... Hani bir şekilde bir karakter bu derece gerçek hayat vari konuşabiliyorsa bir şeyler çok doğru olduğu için öyleymiştir. O yukarıda Manhattan lafına güldüydüm. Aynı olay burada Lauren için oluyor şu an. Bir şekilde böyle bir figürün karşısındaki insanı utandırmadan aslında onu utandırabileceği en büyük e, oranda utandırmış olması falan. Kötü bir cümle kurdum. Okey diyoruz. Aşırı gerçekçi. He had my eyes as he continued to speak. You're young. Many will judge you by that fact of love. I drew a breath. But he held up a hand. I'm not accusing you of engaging in boyish fancy. I'm advising you to avoid the appearance of boyish fancy. He gave me a level look. His face as calm as always. I thought of the way Ambrose had treated me and nodded. Feeling color rise to my cheeks. Lauren brought out a pen and drew a series of hashes through my single line of writing in the ledger book. I have a great respect for curiosity, he said. But others do not think as I do. I will not see your first term unnecessarily complicated by such things. I expect things will be difficult enough for you without that additional worry. I bowed my head, feeling as if I had somehow disappointed him. I understand. Thank you, sir. Okay, diyoruz. Chapter 39. Enough, Rob. Bu bölümün, Joe'nun yazdığı yazılarda bu bölüme dair bir şey diyordu bölüm başına dair. Hissi geldi aklıma ama ne oldu aklıma gelmediği için konuşamıyorum. We shall see, diyoruz. Kapatmadan önce diyecek bir şeyim var mı? Düşünüp geliyorum. Nope. Hadi görüşürüz.